Alrighty. Okay, I think uh, we are live, and we are sans Jeff Lafferty. Um, he had a problem getting his, uh, I guess he's had a, a router problem. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try to do this without him. So, so hey, Jeff, if you're watching, hold on a second. Sorry, buddy. Okay, Ooh. sorry. My audio just can't. I don't know if you could hear that. I could hear my headphones uh, as soon as the YouTube. Might be. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I wish there was a way you could, like, you could stop that in the beginning before it starts playing. Um, for those of you guys watching, we're talking about the, the YouTube uh, video when it pops up because we wanted to have the chat up and everything. So anyway, uh, we are, this is the Artcasters, and, uh, and the way we do this is it's between the three of us or today, just the two of us, and we kind of rotate through our different channels and everything. So I'm hosting this time. And so I thought I, we'd talk about a topic that um, something that I, um, you know, I try to think a lot about. So, um, and I, I know, you know, I know Kevin does too. And I, I, I kind of wanted to, I was hoping to get Jeff on because I really wanted to, to talk to him about this too. But, um, yeah. Plus but, I just missed the guy, you know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, it feels weird doing this without him. It does. This is the first time, you know, I, I, cause I think I've told you guys that if you needed to do it without me, because my, my schedule's getting crazier that that was cool. But, but it is kind of weird only doing it with two people. Yeah, and by the at the end of this month, you guys think you guys are gonna have to do it without me because I'm gonna be out of town. Okay, well maybe this is our dry run, so we know what that's like. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So anyway, we are gonna talk about uh, personal branding, and um, and one of the reasons, again, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this topic, and it was weird because I thought. I went back through the other videos we did, and I'm like, we must have talked about this before, but I don't think we did. So, um, but let's introduce ourselves anyway in the beginning. Um, uh, I'm Scott Circlin with CircWorks. Uh, I do robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity, and that's kind of my, that's kind of my, ele not elevator pitch, but uh, you know, I, I guess my branding statement or, or, or one of them, and that's kind of the, some of the things we're going to talk about today, but you can find my stuff at circworks.com or just look at that lower third graphic and you can find it there. Um, tell everyone about yourself, Kevin. Uh, yes, I'm Kevin Cross. I do uh, cool threats to humanity. No. Um, <laughs> cool stuff for cool people. I make uh, comics about crime-fighting monkeys and rock and roll and uh, write a skateboard. Awesome. <laughs> How's that for an intro? <laughs> uh, basically, but yeah, I'm, I'm a comic book artist, illustrator. Uh, I've been doing it for uh, going on, well, 15 years. It'll be 16 years, I guess, coming up soon. But Awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, personal branding. Uh, um, I think there's some mis kind of some misconceptions out there of what, what branding is or what a personal brand is and everything. Um, if you'll ask a lot of people, I think they're, they'll tell you, oh, it's well, it's like kind of like your logo or it's your, you know, it's it's, you know, what you say about yourself. But um, I think I think with branding, it's a little more I mean, it's a little more what your audience says about you, what um, I think you can do things to influence your brand. Um, but ultimately it's, it's kind of, it's your reputation. It's what, what other people say about you, not necessarily what you say about yourself. And hopefully you can, you can line those two. So they're, you know, so they're together. So you're, but sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll put something out there and your brand becomes something totally different. And sometimes maybe it's, it's something, uh, something you didn't expect. And sometimes you roll with it and it kind of works. So, um, but we're going to talk a little bit about branding today, personal branding. Um, I don't yeah, know, Kevin. I'm is even it... more interested in this, just the way you framed it. Um, okay. Because it's not exactly something I've thought about. Um, it's, it, you know, I've just thought about, like, what's my color scheme? What's my logo going to look like? What's the feeling to get from those things? You know, but I think you framed it in a, a more thoughtful way. So, ready to, ready to unpack that. Here's what you have to say about it. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm going to switch over to my screen so I can work while I'm doing this. Because that's the other thing we do on this show. While we're, we're not just talking, but we're also trying to <laughs> trying to get some work done. So I'm going to go ahead and share my comic. So I do comics too. Yeah. So this is my comic book, Young and the Dead. It is a zombie story, kids versus zombies. That's another thing, you know. Um, so like with my personal brand, um, 
Well, here I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that first, and I'm gonna um, talk about uh, just a. I think I think if we give an example of good branding, I think that will that will kind of help establish what we're talking about and everything. So, I'm gonna take you back. I'm gonna go old school and take you way back to <laughs> way back to the 70s. Tell or us a story. In, so, in some ways, some ways actually the 50s. But so we're gonna talk about somebody who has awesome branding. And we're going to talk about the Fonz, Arthur oh, Fonzarelli. Yeah, yes. So, so here you go. You've got the Fonz. For those those of you uh, younger kids who don't know who the Fonz is, Google that. Um, so, <laughs> everything about the Fonz is in service to his 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 personal brand. The way he talks, you know, it's like he's got catchphrases like "a" and just things that he does. The way he talks, the way he dresses, he's got the leather jacket. The way he hits the side of a jukebox that doesn't work. Um, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, the leather jacket. In case you, in case you go back, unless you go back to like the first season where he had that that gray jacket, but we won't talk yeah. about that. But yeah, um, you know, everyone starts with their branding somewhere, right? And it, yeah, it, exactly. And that's what I was saying. It, what I was saying before. Sometimes your brand it kind of develops as you go. And I think I think because when Fon, the Fonz was first introduced in the series Happy Days, I mean, he wasn't the main character. I mean, Richie. Yeah. Well, Richie kind of still was the main character in a way, but but it's kind of it was also. I don't want to get onto something totally different, but um, that show Family Matters matters with Urkel. That was just like a minor character, and he t basically took over the show for better or for worse. I I think in Fonz in the Happy Days case, it's for better. I think in the Family Matters case, maybe for worse. <laughs> but but um, so. Again, the Fonz, everything about him was about his reputation. And that's really what a brand, that's really what branding is. It's your reputation. It's what, you know, it's how people see you. It's how people react to you. Um, and the Fonz would never do anything. I mean, he couldn't even say he was sorry because that was bad for his reputation. I mean, every time he tried to say he was sorry, it's like, or he was wrong, you know, it's like, I was, <laughs> he couldn't say it. So, um, you know, it's it's all those things, and I think I just think that's a really good example because everything he does, where it's it's his dress, his his um, mannerisms, his the way he talks, the way you know, everything. You know, that's that's pretty much sums up branding. So hopefully that gives everyone a better idea of um, of what a personal brand is. Now, again, like I was saying before, you can you can influence that brand. You can you can you know create your your logo and your color scheme and your um, you know whatever everything that goes around with it whether it's your your uh, thumbnail images and things like that for your YouTube channel or the way you brand yourself across social media um, uh, like a branding statement if you have something like that right, that so it's it, like clues to let people know kind of what they're in for exactly exactly so. Um, so I don't know. You said you had some questions or some thoughts that you things you were thinking about. Um, so what were you thinking about, Kevin? Well, okay. So um, you know, it's I've talked to death about this graphic novel that I'm actually working on now, and uh, the things I want to do when it's over. You know, um, and so you know, part of that is like my website needs to be redone, and you do a new monkey mod, which is my personal comic for people who don't know out there, and, um, you know, things like that. I need to redo a lot of things. I haven't touched my website for probably a good year and a half at least. Um, you know, but, and then my YouTube channel looks different than all that, you know, and <clears throat> um, so I used to feel like I had a handle on what my personal brand was, but now I'm not super sure um, so you know I don't know um, I've been wanting to kind of make everything look cohesive so that if you're following me on you know any of the social networks or pop over to like one of the sites I'm involved with you know my website or the monkey mod site or YouTube whatever um, that you you know it's it's clear that it's me all the time right right um, you know and that doesn't mean you know, and it's clear the way I mean is you don't have to see a photo of me to know that it's my, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I used to feel pretty confident about this stuff, but now I'm like, well, I really like 
you know, uh, graphic design from like the 50s, 60s, and 70s primarily. Um, you know, but they don't always gel sometimes, you know. Right. Um, the comic that I'm doing is my primary, you know, kind of thing, My you know, that's going to service my mission statement of phasing out clients and do my own thing, that kind of stuff, is, is based on 60s pop culture. Um, but, you know, I don't look like a mod from the 60s or anything. So, you know, and, and now we're talking more colors and logos and things like that than... Yeah, well, what I would say is... So, I, I'm, uh, I'm a little confused. I'm a little indecisive, I guess I should say, about what to do at the moment. And... Uh, and also, you know, I don't know know what my personal brand is really anymore, um, because I used to when I used to do podcasts, I used to kind of hide who I really was, in a way. Um, like sometimes, you know, if you watch any of these videos or my videos, on my videos I try not to cuss that much, but on these sometimes it just like, if one comes out, I just let it uh, go with it for the rest of the show, you right. know. Um, and then sometimes on my videos. You know, it's still come. Maybe a curse word will come out, but I'll I'll just like let it go. You know, um, but for the you know, so I you know I don't know. Well, I I don't know if I don't am know I making sense with any I mean, these concerns or whatever. Yeah, I should have been taking notes because you touched on a bunch of things that I want to mention. Are, are you getting any feedback? Uh, no, sounds okay. good to me. All right. I had a little bit there. Um, so yeah, you touched on a few different things that I wanted to, I wanted to, to go back to. Um, uh, one of the things was when you were talking about, you know, monkey mod in general, I mean, I don't, and I've kind of struggled with this too, for the most part. Um, but I don't think, I don't think necessarily every product you have, have you produce needs to, um, needs to, I don't want to say it doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't need to fit your brand because there's, there's comic book authors and writers and, and illustrators out there and they'll do different kinds of comic books, but maybe the way they present themselves online, maybe whatever, the way they talk, the way they blog, um, that doesn't necessarily have to, to gel exactly with, um, with what the actual products were. And I kind of struggled that with that too, with, you know, my comic book, um, cause it's about, it's about kids and zombies and everything. Um, but everything else I do, if you're not really familiar with my brand, it's it's basically like a mad scientist supply store. So everything that I do is kind of a theme. Like for instance, if there was if my if if I had an odd an actual audience, if they existed, if mad scientists actually existed or evil geniuses actually existed, well, that would be my core audience. Now that that's really not a real thing for the most part, but but it's fun to think like that, and it's fun to pretend like that, or or or, um, or or what's the word I'm looking for? I guess I guess kind of consider yourself that, or you know, or or be into that type of thing. And the people that are that are into that type of thing, that's kind of that's the real audience. But there's a make believe audience out there, which are mad scientists, evil genius people that want to take over the world, and and the products, and the illustrations, and the prints, and the you know, the novelties and everything I do is in service to that. So it's kind of like I'm, I'm, I'm marketing myself to something that doesn't really exist, but there's a, I think there's a fan base out there, but really it's for people who are into science and art and, you know, oh, things retro, like that. science fiction kind of stuff too. Huh? Yeah. Science fiction, retro future type, that type of thing. Um, but like my comic book, because it's, you know, it's about, it's not really that. And the style, the style that I work on in my comic, as you can kind of see a little bit here, um, it's a lot different than you'll see some of the prints and things that I sell. But so I really had to think, and I got rid of some, some of the products that I were, was doing or working on that didn't really fit into that. And it was kind of, it's hard for me to do that because I had a children's book that I was developing and it was, it was called everything a kid needs to know about the family vacation. It's about, and it was basically a real tongue in cheek look at the family vacation and what happens and how to survive a family vacation. Um, you know, 
So, but that didn't really fit into what I was doing. So I kind of put that on the back burner indefinitely. Um, but with the comic book, you know, I'm thinking to myself, well, this is a make believe, this is sort of a, like a, a mad scientist lab. What happened? What, what happens in laboratories? They work on experiments, you know, uh, usually a zombie virus is the result of something gone wrong in a lab. Um, robots are built in, in labs or factories, you know, possibly by mad science or whatever. And aliens, you know, maybe there's some secret experiments on, you know, uh, like UFOs that have crash landed, people doing experiments like that in the lab. So that's kind of how I fit everything together. And that's kind of where I came up with the the kind of that the the tagline robots alien zombies and other imminent threats to humanity um and the other one i use if you go to my website you see it now i'm trying to change everything from because when i started off and that's what i was talking about before where things kind of you'll find things kind of evolve when i first started off um i had this kind of rube goldberg-esque factory type motif um but it didn't really, I wasn't really thinking like mad science and stuff like that, but i kind of made that work as, as the, you know, as the brand evolved. But originally it was just, I focused on character design doing, you know, freelance illustration. I did a lot of character design. Now kind of as I go, as I went on, it seemed like everybody wanted to do that. And the kind of market was kind of saturated with people that did character design. Um, so I kind of shift cause it was before it was just Cirque works illustration and design with character. And that whole machine, that whole Rube Goldberg thing was a make believe character builder. Like, like he put in things and it spits out characters. Um, so I kind of took that and kind of, I didn't want to totally rebrand, but I wanted to evolve that. And so that's kind of what I went with. But right now, so what I'm, I'm changing everything from just Cirque works, even though, and this is another thing we should talk about is, is the name you use, whether I think between you, myself and Jeff, I think I'm the only one that doesn't actually use my own name. So it's, that's kind of a weird thing for me because I use Cirque works, which is sort of part of my name, you know? Um, but it's not, you know, when you say personal branding, it's still sort of behind this kind of weird, you know, moniker. So, um, but the, one of the things you want to do is try to keep that consistent across all your social media if you can. Um, and that sort of works for me because no one really else has circ work. So I can usually get those URLs or those, you know, Twitter handles and all that kind of thing. Um, but if, but anyway, so, uh, to go back to what I was talking about before, um, the, what I'm doing now is I'm changing everything from CircWorks to CircWorks Art Lab because to me that kind of sums it up. It's a laboratory, but it's also I do art. It's it explains what I do. It's got the name in there, and then I've got this other sort of tagline that says um, the science of geekology because I do a lot of geek type stuff. It's it's science. It's geeky. It's fun. It's all that. So, so that's kind of the look I'm going. And as we go into the new year, I'm going to try to focus a little more because even though I think I have a pretty good handle on what I want my brand to be, which it sounds like something that's what you're trying to figure out. I kind of know what I want it to be. It just, I haven't put all the places, the things in place. And there's still a lot of things that I'm doing that really are in service to the brand that I kind of want to, um, evolved into that. Some of the things like, so I do the fan art Friday, which I like doing the fan art and everything, but it doesn't really, it's not really sciencey. It's not, I mean, it is a lot of the things I do are a lot of robots and things. And I like doing that and I don't want to stop doing that, but I'm thinking if I can kind of curtail it into maybe if I do fan art, somehow work it into, you know, the science and the, the retro future type look um, to that, or, you know, I'm doing these misgrit videos. Um, and I'll be perfectly honest that one of the main reasons I'm doing that is to kind of grow my audience because I have, I have an audience from when I used to create misfits for, um, for the game studio I used to work with, which if you're not familiar with that, what that is, that's a, that's a, um, it's a, it's a game I used to work on and everything. And it's creature, it's a creature fighting game and everything. So, so I'm doing these videos and I'm hopefully trying to get an audience. I'm, hopefully I can, I can get some of the, the people that were into the, the Mystrix game to, um, to kind of get into my own stuff. Um, but I'm having fun doing that too. Cause it's, you know, it's, it kind of takes me back to when I was working on that stuff, but it's really not in service to the brand, but what I'm hoping I'm doing, cause the, these creatures that I'm doing for this Mystrix game, um, they're a lot like aliens or not. I mean, I, so I think, I think once I wrap up that series, once I complete this, 
this uh, this miscreant line of creatures, I think what I'm going to do is keep t continuing doing creature design videos, but have it have it go a little more towards you know this the art lab like we're creating these creatures in the lab or whatever and that's one of the main reasons like not every video i do um and we talked we talked a little bit about how you present yourself too, how you dress so if you look at the miscrit videos and some of some of my other videos like the videos i do for the conventions and things you'll notice i've got like this bright green lab coat and everything so that's again that's kind of part of the persona and everything um even though the miscrits really is something different i'm Hopefully what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to to get the people that are interested in that and present them to show them what I am, what my brand is, and, and hopefully maybe convert some of these fans. So you know, I guess I'm, I'm kind of monopolizing the conversation, but. Uh, oh, that's cool. You cut out there. Can you repeat all that again? <laughs> I hope you're kidding. <laughs> uh, so, um, so I don't know, Kevin, uh, based on the tonight, did I answer your question? I think I just kind of went on a tangent there. Um, no, I, well, I mean, I, you know, I think you did. You answered it, you know, maybe more indirectly, you know, as showing examples instead of just flat out saying having an answer, but there's an answer in there. But um, so, but what you're saying, you know, it's all stuff that, that you know, I'm aware of because I've been doing this. I almost cussed right there. I've been doing yeah. this junk for so long um you know and there's been times when i've had a handle on what my branding was um because you know i didn't have as much going on you know or i didn't have like the goal that i have set now you know um you know at one point it was just uh you know i had done a like a, a self-portrait of myself and you know i drew certain things and you know that self-portrait was sort of like a became like a logo and um you know that kind of stuff um but now i've got all the you know these these other goals happening and like monkey mod plays my comic plays high you know has a lot of prominence in that but um you know i know right now monkey mod's not going to be a money maker and i need you know i can't just bank on him to pay the bills because he's not going to because the comic's not coming out yet um, so, you know, and part of my goal is to be not, not just like brand monkey mod separate, but like be branded with monkey mod, you know what I mean? As the creator of monkey mod. Right. You know, right. That kind of thing. Um, so, you know, if I want to brand monkey mod, that's simple. That's real easy for me to do, you know, Italian scooters from the sixties, um, you know, mod rock kind of maximum r and kind of stuff, um, garage rock in the 60s, that kind of stuff, the aesthetic of the 60s before, you know, the, before the hippie aesthetic kind of came in, and, you know, that stuff's easy, but, um, but branding myself with that is a little harder, because yeah. my background is not as a mod, but as like a, an 80s hardcore punk, which is a totally different aesthetic, you know, um, but I'm also a middle-aged dude now, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> um, so I, I'm just trying to cons think about like, what, how am I going to change my branding into the new year? Cause in the new year, um, I'm sure, you know, just in case there's any new listeners, what I'm trying to do is start phasing out clients next year. And, you know, I don't, uh, I think it's going to happen right away, but I'm hoping. Um, but anyway, for the first part of the year, I'm definitely working as if uh, I, I, I've achieved my goal uh, for as long as possible. But anyway, um, so, you know, I'll be doing like paintings and, you know, kind of like what Jeff's doing, you know, do, selling pieces and stuff like that. Yeah. So... You know, so I'm, I'm thinking of branding more than just the comic, you know. Um, yeah. So, anyway, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, well, whether you, 
whether you realize it or not, you have a personal brand. Now, whether you want to kind of develop that or kind of try to shift that or try to, um, you know, push that in a different direction, because I mean, anyone that's been following you from a while knows that, you know, you've got, you, you're definitely punk rock. You definitely, I mean, there's, there's everything that we talked about before it's, is there, you know, now right. when you said you don't really, you know, the mod and the punk are different, but I've heard you talk many times about the similarities between the two. Um, yeah. So now, of course, you can't explain that to everyone, but but it's there. And one of the things when people like companies, when they do like a brand audit, when they go in and they, well, what is your brand? And, and let's kind of refocus that or let's figure out if we're on track and everything. Well, one of the questions they ask are, what, are, what, are, what three things are you most passionate about? Um, and I mean, a lot, I think a lot of your passions come out in your work. So it's not, I mean, you're, you're not like one of these guys that's, that's just doing, uh, you know, Deadpool or Harley Quinn fan art because it's popular. I mean, you're doing some, you're doing the work that you do because you love it. And I think that comes out. And I, to me, it's all, to me at all, and maybe it's just because I've been following you for so long, but it's all very punk rock. And there's a, you know, back when, you know, when you're talking about, you know, whether you're cursing or whatever, to me, that was just part of who you were because it's, it, you're, you're putting yourself out there. This is who you are and everything like that. Now. Yeah, that's, whether, that's what I want to do more. Cause I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't want to derail this too much, but I had this idea that, um, I, I really, I needed to, you know, this is, we're talking years ago though, when it, the podcast came out at this point, um, you know, I had this idea that, uh, I had to, like we, it had to appeal to as many people as possible, which I now understand that you really, you, you don't have to, you shouldn't worry about that. You just gotta worry about what appeals to you and, you know, and then a, a crowd, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out your crowd from that too. If that makes yeah. Sense. Well, so again, and there's, there's two different ways you can go about it. I mean, for me, I mean, obviously, I'm not really a mad scientist, so a lot of it, this is this what? Is, show over. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, a lot of this, it's it's a persona that I'm creating. Um, now, there are a lot of things that part of this that I very very passionate about that I love doing, but you know, you can either you can either totally be exactly who you are. This is who I am. And this is what I'm putting out there. Or you can kind of you know, you can kind of take parts of what you are and and kind of you know i don't want to say homogenized because i don't want to describe myself like that but you know you can it, it doesn't have to be exactly who you are because not, not everyone wants to put everything about them out there on the internet and that's fine so you have to do what you're comfortable with um and you know okay i mean we were talking about this before i just had my id stolen and if you watch me on these things you may not th think i i curse because I, I don't usually curse on the, you know, on my shows and stuff like that. But once I found this out, you hear me cursing like a sailor. So, I mean, it, it's. What kind of words did you say, Scott? <laughs> you can imagine all of them. <laughs> but, <work. laughs> so, so I don't want to say that I, I don't want it to sound like I'm being fake or anything, but you don't, you, you just have to put out what you're comfortable with. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was a time when, uh, you know, not even that long ago when I was working in kids books and, you know, and I was trying to get in at one point and, you know, I think some of the things that in my real, you know, my real life, some of the words I used that, you know, they would have been like, oh, we can't have this guy on a kid's book. He says the F word, you know, right, right. <laughs> That's what it felt like at first. But now I, I've come to realize that, yes, yeah, so do they. So, yeah. And, um, and I think you do have to be conscious because if, if it is going to be detrimental to what you're trying to do then maybe it's not a good idea to to say certain things on the internet or, or, or whatever. Um, but, you know, that, again, you kind of have to decide that, but it's, you know, you have, you have to figure out what, what is you want people to think about you and, and, and try to, you know, trying to kind of, you, know, you know, service that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, You know, I what I'm thinking is, you know, I just 
to like really focus on the like rock and roll aspect of my life because that's probably the biggest part. It you know it comes into play in my artwork as well as my daily life. So you're still there? Did I lose you? Um, no, I'm here. I'm oh. here. I wasn't sure if you were done with your thought. So I mean. If we want to talk, I mean, I guess we can, I mean, a lot of, a lot of times with branding, um, like when you're trying to develop your brand, you start with the visuals, you try to, you, you come up with an ID for yourself, like a, like a, you know, a, a, like a mark, like a logo or whatever it is, or a style um, that, that represents your company or not your company. Well, in this case, personal branding. Um, so let's, I mean, we can talk, we can talk like visuals and, you know, and how you know how you want to present that i know it seemed you know when you look at if you go back through like your video and everything everything is very like graphic like all your title cards and it seems like you go with a different look like when you launch a new um when you yeah. launch a new video series and that's cool too because that separates those things as different as yeah, separate see, things okay, now, now you're hitting on maybe kind of almost exactly what I'm getting at okay. is is it seems like I've got like I brand all my you know I guess we can call those videos projects as well right for, okay for lack of a better term um, anytime I do a new project you know I got like the branding all figured out for what that thing is but but I'm I'm just starting to wonder if that is detrimental if I'm like Spreading it, spreading me out too thin that way, or you know, you know what I mean? I... Yeah. I, again, I think I don't see I don't see it as a problem because it, it separates it separates the different video series. Each one of them kind of has its own look. Now, I mean, you maybe want you know if there was an element um, that you want to you know put throughout that like if there's a certain like font that you want to use or you know some kind of iconography or something like that um that you want to maybe incorporate throughout or um a lot of the stuff that i have you'll see kind of this running motif of the like the, kind of the blueprints yeah if you've noticed that but a lot of things i have sort of uh you know a blueprint i use that usually use the same font for most of the stuff i do um so I try to tie all that in to everything I do um, from everything from my website to when I do shows. And that's something I also kind of want to work into something that I'm actually marketing is I want to actually do these design some crazy like, you know, weird blueprints and actually sell like blueprints. But I'm trying to I'm trying to find a, a place that can print those things because it's it's all the ones I've looked at are crazy expensive. But I'd like to come up with some weird like crazy like Matt like you're a, you're a fan of Mad Magazine but you would see at least things like these inventions and they'd have all the little um, you know indications of what this thing does and it's just all you know it's very you know funny and everything like that so that's something that I want to do um, so I, I kind of it's a great uh, idea got off in a tangent there but but yeah I want to sell like blueprints of crazy machines that don't actually exist and and like kind of dr. Seuss type things or Rube Goldberg type things so um, but so I I've been incorporating the blueprint thing and the font and um, again the you know there that my stuff is very um, like bright bright like almost like almost like day glow type colors against that kind of dark blue like background the, um, yeah. So it's something I've been playing with with for a while, and you know, I, again, I bring that to shows. And I know, I know, we talked about this privately, so I don't know if you want to bring any of this up. Um, but you had had some ideas of things that when you started doing shows that you were going to do, and I thought there were some really cool ideas that really fit with with your brand. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I that's true. I, I totally spaced it, and it, it's funny because I just looked at one of the things that I actually like pre bought. Um, yeah, so, you know, my, my comic book is, you know, predominantly, you know, it's got a rock and roll bent to it and stuff like that. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, you know, I've been, uh, I think this coming up year is my like 32nd year as a, like a, a, a punk rock lifer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a tagline right there, punk rock lifer, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, like so far, I've been putting what have I been putting on my stuff? Illustrator, skateboarder, punk, dad. That's what I've been yeah. tagging all over everything. Um, anyway, um, so vinyl records plays a big deal, plays a big part in you know in this kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, people say they're you know might be rock and roll fans now, but um, specifically like the kind of rock and roll I'm into now, and the fans of that kind of rock and roll are still buying vinyl and the bands that are coming out now are still putting out vinyl um and have been you know i mean vinyl's kind of back like the mainstream has kind of grabbed onto it and the mainstream stuff is coming out in vinyl now but i don't think it's gonna last as much as it is in the subcultures i've been involved in where it never went away so anyway um that's a clue for the fans or potential fans of my work hey this guy has got um a record player on his table at the convention so um, if anybody's old enough there was a time when in PE class we had to do square dancing <laughs> I remember that and uh, and there's these um, these record players they're kind of real institutional looking kind of these big like bulky boxes they look like like a suitcase like a square suitcase and you open it up and there's a turntable inside and in the front of it would be the speaker, you know, and it was mono and the sound was terrible. But um, anyway, you can get those for very cheap now. You can also, also, it also reminds me of the projectors that they used to show films at in school. Oh, in totally. those cases. But yeah. yeah. True. So um, anyway, uh, you can find those, you know, and occasionally they'll show up at uh, even thrift stores and stuff. But um, so my idea was to get one, which is in my closet actually, um, and then get a broken one, because uh, you know I'm not gonna play records on it. I ever got two turntables that work at home. Um, but that's an aside. But uh, anyway, and gut it, like gut all the stuff out, all the insides out that don't work, um, and then then I've got a little storage in there for you know buttons or. Um, not enough comics really fit in there, but you know, like little some of the the products I have there ideas like in the subcultures of mod and punk and metal patches for your jacket or you know those those are big things. So I can put patches in there, I can put buttons in there. Um, you know, a little bit of storage anyway. And then on the turntable on top, um, make make like a lid um, out of that turntable, like all the electronics. Now my hands are on the screen, so people I don't know if this is helping. But all the electronics are underneath it. Those are all gutted. That's now storage. The turntable now is put on a hinge and lifts up. And, but then the turntable lays flat still as if it's a working record player. And then on top of the turntable, I can put like one of those, um, oh, I don't know what you call it, but for lack of a better term, like those dish display kind of things. Um, like a little easel or something like that. Prop my comic book up on that uh, yeah. or whatever product. And so, And that's like on a record player. You know, and so the idea also is to make my whole um, uh, table kind of look like an old record store, uh, which which back in the day, you know, they become niche. But back in the day, that was where you know that was like the comic book store for people, like cool people, I guess, you know, or people who thought they're cool anyway. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah, so so you brought up something kind of when you're you were talking about about niche and you're trying to figure out going back to the you know the difference between mod music and punk rock music and so when you think about it we can talk about niche and we can talk about you know kind of the a wider scope but when you whether you say mod rock or punk rock it's still rock it's still rock yeah, music it's, it's so, just rock and roll subcultures right right and i think the vinyl you know, we were talking about that ties that all in together. So I mean, I think, I think you know, I, I got I, my branding. Kim Cross Records, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could definitely, I could see that like as a backdrop with like a you know the the vinyl, the little circle thing with the uh, uh, you know with yeah the, the design your own adapter. What's that? Are you talking the forty five adapter? No, I wasn't talking about that, but that that definitely you could work that in. But I was thinking just a, a basically a label, you know, what, mm. you know, for a regular, you know, a regular. What's the not forty five? Is seventy five is the regular LP? 
Is that right? The 30, 33 and a third. 33 and a third. Okay. So yeah, but just like a label, but have it have it branded as who you are. But a big I can see like a big giant vinyl record with your logo and everything and then all that stuff. I mean, you could go a million different ways, but I I definitely think you're on to something. And it's kind of like what I was trying to do back when I was trying to figure out how all the, I can take all these pieces that I, of things that I like working on, I like doing, and how can I make them all fit together as one cohesive thing. And I think you're kind of onto that right now. You're kind of moving towards that. And I think it's just going to take, you know, more brainstorming and things like that on, on, on how to, how to do that. But I mean, I, I definitely think you have, you have all the pieces of the brand in place. Um, I mean, they're, they're there and maybe, you know, just some fine tuning and things like that. But um, I, I definitely see you're on the right track. Yeah. I mean, as, as I think branding is, is about, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, it's about storytelling and that's kind of what we do as artists, especially, you know, uh, you know, artists who are storytellers because we do comics and things like that. So, I mean, I think it's sort of a natural. So how do we take, how do we, how do we tell our story with the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we, you know, present ourselves, the work we produce, you know, what is that story? All that stuff put together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that seems like a common thread. Um, with anybody who's kind of popular or becomes popular or has some kind of, you know, comic book artist or, or uh, painter or whatever. Um, it's it's there's always the story and everyone's really interested in you know that's why that's why you know i bought like uh say like the fire and ice dvd because it also came with the frank frazetta documentary you know <laughs> we hear the story of him so um yeah i think story is important um and you know i think you're you're right i mean going with like a record store kind of thing or kind of the aesthetics of the record store from back when i grew up um is a good route to go because that is part of my story. You know, that is a place I hung out at. There's definitely like iconic imagery, like the 45 adapter, for example, we we're talking about. Um, uh, what else was I going to, Oh, you know, one of my struggles was fighting with my, my three favorite decades of graphic design. Um, cause they look very different, you know, fifties to the sixties to the seventies. And lately I've been really wanting to go with like the seventies, record store kind of look um which is also kind of based on the the like 1979 atari ads stuff the color schemes and things like that um but i could see that fitting in too because back then you would go to the record store and you bought records from all eras and i mean i like old stuff um but kind of the the stuff that I draw, the stuff that's going to be in my comic and stuff. It's like updated views of nostalgia, I guess, retro stuff. I guess it all kind of ties in. Thank you for helping me think out loud. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully we're, I mean, I, and I, I think, you know, it's, it's, again, it's just, it's a matter of, you know, kind of, I don't know, jotting down notes and thinking about things and, and, and kind of, you know, putting every, put it, putting everything, uh, you know, I guess, <laughs> I guess take all your ideas, put them together and figure out how they, how they fit together. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not forming my words properly, but I know I want to say something and I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I think, uh, there may, I just kind of glanced over at the chat. There were some, there were some. It looks like you've been in there, but I haven't really been. Yeah, paying I saw attention, one so. that. One. Well, you go ahead. But there's one question that I thought was probably pretty pertinent that you probably could speak to better than me. Is it the this? Um, if you present your first brand, won't that hurt you when you present under your own name? Okay, where repeat that again because I'm not seeing it yet. Okay, if you present your work under a brand, like I.e. Cirque Works instead right. of Scott Circling won't that hurt you when you present under your own name? It, it I mean, it can, and that's, that's kind of been a, a sort of a struggle. Cause I've heard, 
Um, there was, I remember there was a, like a Twitter post by an artist that I followed that I kind of respected his work and stuff. And he basically put a tweet out that says, if you're not using your real name, you know, you're doing it wrong. And I'm I like, think I saw that too. Yeah. This is, this is kind of a while back. So if you remember that same post, <laughs> then it's, but, but I don't know if I necessarily agree. I mean, I can kind of see where that's coming from, but in some ways, um, you know, it's not like, um, I'm like, you know, Spectre Vision 75 or some weird <laughs> thing that doesn't mean anything. Cirque works. I mean, part of it is my name. So I think, I think hopefully people can kind of see that connection. They see my name, you know, it, so, it, but it's not the, you know, I could use Cirque, I could use Circlin and I wouldn't probably wouldn't have any problem getting the domain names because there's not a cir lot of Circlins around there. Uh, out there, but I don't know. I when I, I wasn't, I guess I wasn't totally thinking about that when I started, you know, the business and everything. And it's kind of evolved, so I've always had that. But in my case, I don't really, I don't think it's too much of a detriment. I, but I think, I think the main thing is consistency. Mm -hmm. I don't think you want to have, you know, I see people who have a different name on their Instagram from their Tumblr from their Facebook. It's all different, and and it doesn't. It's and a lot of people that if you've got these non de plumes or whatever, was that how you pronounce that? <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. It's okay. <laughs> these it's aliases like or whatever, if 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 they're if it is difficult to trace it back, because I've had people that I've talked to, and then they said, "Oh, I'm so and so online," and I go, "Oh, you're you're that person. I didn't know that." So I don't want to talk to you now. Yeah. So <laughs> hopefully, with what I'm doing, it, it's it's a little clearer. And, but there's there's things that I'm thinking about, like because right now on my YouTube channel, the YouTube channel is under Scott Circlin. Even though if you go to, if I've you, found it, it both ways though. Have you? Yeah. If you type in Cirque Work, I mean, if I think the actual whatever YouTube URL they have is Cirque Works, but whenever it shows up, like if you're watching one of my videos underneath, it says Cir Scott Circlin. But I don't know. I was thinking of trying to change that, and then I didn't and now I don't know what I want to do with that because I kind of wanted to say Cirque Works Art Lab but then I looked a lot of people are using their real name for that so I don't know I mean it's I, I just I think consistency is one thing and I think I think if you're going to use some kind of alias I think it should tie into what you're doing or or some way to let people know the real person is the same as the alias you know which so can be difficult me that I should go through everything and change my username from Frankenstein fanboy 69. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, and, and there's also the problem because if you have a common name, you're, yes. you're going to have a hard time getting those, you know, those, you know, URLs and things like that. Yeah. There's a lot more Kevin crosses than I thought. Yeah. It's but a, you know, but there's only so many Kevin Cross that are artists. So if you use Kevin artist Kevin Cross or the real Kevin Cross, there's certain things you can use that you can add and still still do your name your own name. Like because I know if, if any of you guys like follow Gazbot, um, he's got almost all his names have Gaz something in it, and he I think he's trying to change it so it's all the same. So I know he somebody else has Gadbot something. He was talking about one of his videos, and he actually contacted them, and he got the I think he got the name from them. So I think he's kind of tried to move in that direction, um, which cool. can be difficult, basically because it's kind of what's whatever is available. But at least he's you know he's he's got his name at least part of his name somewhere in each one of those things, and you know, and so it's just you know. It's kind of hard because most of them have already started our life online. And a lot of people, I mean, you've established this, like, say, when you were in high school or something like that, and you've, you know, and you created the name and you've been using that for so long that a lot of people do know you about it. But but it's difficult for other people to figure out who you are. And so, you know, that's kind of a, that's, that's something you have to think about. You know, it's, it'd be hard to start all over again. If, if something allows that you can't change your name on a certain thing or whatever. Um, but, but if you are getting started, that's definitely something you want to consider, you know, can I get all the, can I get all the, 
you know, URLs or the, the handles and things like that and what's the best way to do this. Um, yeah, if you look on on the screen, oh, did it turn off? Yes, it did. There was uh, a, oh, it turns off when I'm sh screen sharing, that's why. Anyway, it did say uh, my YouTube channel URL and it says Kevin Cross Art because I could not get Kevin Cross. So, <laughs> had to put yeah. the qualifier there. But it's still, you know, it's 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 who you are, and it tells. It also says what you do. So, yeah. um, you know. So I'm looking at the YouTube video. Is that one the one we were talking about where it looks frozen? Hopefully, we're still live. Uh, it says live to me. Okay. Yeah, it says live. Oh, but in the chat room, it, I think they just got a hiccup or something. Okay. Okay. So, are there is there anything else in the chat we mentioned? Let's see, or that we missed. Uh, yeah, we got one. Of, yeah, our usernames all really suck. They're all different. I'm trying to, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's it's something something to think about um, because whatever whatever branding that you're doing, you want it to be you want it to be cross platform. You know, you don't want to as much as you can because you can't customize. I mean, these are all separate. You know, companies and separate social networks owned by different people. So you can't always brand everything the way you want exactly. But for the most part, they'll let you, you know, change things and you can put your own logo or your own, you know, your own avatar and things like that. Um, so that's, but you do want to, I mean, where, if, if you're branding yourself, you want that to be consistent across, you know, across all the different platforms and everything. Yeah. Um, something I need to do, and I've done it before, but um, I was looking at some of my social medias today to also see if they're still relevant to me. Because I don't know, that that's a whole nother show. But I think Facebook is dying, as well as Twitter. But that might be just my opinion. Anyway, um, is to uh, use the same avatar across all your platforms as well as your same name. Yeah, I, I think I do that for the most part, and there are things that still just have my own picture because I, I a lot of things have my little character, which is like yeah. I mean, I think if you're going to use your pic a picture of yourself, then use that same picture across all the platforms. Yeah, you know, it's just it, it doesn't matter if it's like your little circle word guy or like a picture of you, just uh, have that consistency. Yeah, and I'll have to look and see what I don't think I don't think my personal Facebook page. I think I've got a picture of of me, but I think on my my fan page I have a picture of the icon, which I'm gonna go ahead. I'm I am that's one thing, and that's that's another thing I'm gonna have to kind of audit myself and kind of look at everything that I'm doing. Um, again, I want to change everything to CircWorks Art Lab instead of just CircWorks. Um, what was the reasoning again behind that? Well, I think it, I think for one, it 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 tells. It tells what I do because CircWorks doesn't mean anything to anyone unless you know about it. But CircWorks Art Lab that says something. Well, art, okay, that's cool. Lab, well, that's interesting. Yeah. How does that work? And then maybe maybe it's kind of a, it, it's it almost um, it's it's something to get you more interested in finding more about it or whatever. I guess. Um, and then once you hopefully once you see it, then because at first it was just going to be CircWorks Labs, but then people may think that well, I use the same kind real of science art. stuff, you know, or, or whatever. But I, I saw the Serpworks Art Lab, I kind of I kind of like. And at first, it was just going to be the name of a show that I was going to do on my channel. And then I was thinking, well, no, that that kind of works for everything. So eventually, I'm going to change everything over. Now, I, my URL is still going to, for my website, is still going to be serpworks.com. Twitter is still going to be serpworks. However, you know, however, all these different, however, they, they, you know their naming conventions work. It's just going to be CircWorks, but but whenever you see like the logo or whatever, it's going to say CircWorks Art Labs because for one, short and also shorter is better. Another thing that it's good if you can the shorter you can get your URLs and stuff like that, the better because it's less it's less for somebody to type out. Yeah, I wanted to have X, but <laughs> Who uh, has that? it's a band. It's, it's a band from the oh no, did I just mess up on my work damn it sorry i've been um, talking so much i haven't really worked on anything <laughs> but that's all yeah. right okay there we go yeah i almost messed up something but anyway um 
Yeah, X is a, a punk band from the popular, popular early LA punk band. Anyway, that was a stupid joke. So if, you know, I was just kind of going to familiarize myself, kind of get an idea of kind of what everyone's brands was. And this is before I, you know, um, Jeff had to kind of wasn't able to go on. But so I looked at I looked at uh, at your website and, you know, the super rad illustrations of Kevin Cross. And to me that that I don't know if you're still using that or whatever, but that says, I mean, again, that's your personality. I mean, that's a phrase, you know, yeah. rad is something you say all the time. And again, it's kind of so. You know, well, I think I'm still going to I'm still going to use that as like a tagline. Yeah. You know? Or I guess it's not a tagline. It's an above the. It's an above tagline. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll still work that in there somewhere because. Um, but I, I just want I want to change all the design, um, to invoke a more. Uh, nostalgic, but, you know. The cool kids who hung out at the record store, because you know I'm making geeky stuff, but um, I, I hate the term geek. I hate the term nerd. I'm into all that stuff that is considered geeky and nerdy, but I don't think you have to be. You can't be cool and be into it. Um, you know if that makes any sense or just makes me sound like I'm being a pompous ass, but <laughs> it's, it's what I think. So so I wanted to have you know a cool aesthetic for geeky. Geeky stuff for cool people aesthetic, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I see what you're saying. To me, the, the term geek is kind of like, you know, it's it's something that... It's just so co-opted by the, you know... It is, but the thing I do like about it is it's something that was a negative, and, and we've taken it and kind of put a positive spin on it, which I think is cool, because that used to be what people call you to insult you, and now it's kind of a cool thing, so... But I definitely see where you're coming from, too, so... <laughs> it yeah. still doesn't have that cool, you know... Still, when you think geek, you don't, you don't necessarily think cool, but you think it's acceptable now, you know? So I, I right. see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, and I mean... You know, and I'm not trying to take any. I know there's people who are, you know, loud and proud about, you know, having that geek tag and stuff. And I'm not trying to take away from that or anything. So I think it is cool that, it, you know, it's more acceptable because there's no reason why, you know, ever should not have been. Um, but, you know, I, it's probably also my age that I still have those associations. You know, I think of like yeah. Revenge of the Nerds and things like that. And, yeah. you know, I, you know, I've always been into like, you know, comic books and Atari and science fiction and stuff, but, um, but you know, I, I don't know. I wasn't one of those revenge of the nerds type people, you know? So it's just that association, I guess. Yeah. So let's see what else, what else haven't we touched on? If anything, how long have we been going? I'm trying to find out. Uh, we might've been going for an hour. Okay, maybe we usually, we usually go a little over an hour. So if there's, we'll see if there's still more stuff. Maybe I'll look through the chat again one more time. See if we got anything else on here. No, not really. Some, okay, still. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so what? Well, what about so? So, based on kind of what you're, what we've been talking about, do you have any new like? ideas or directions that you're thinking of going into or I mean has this helped at all because I know you were kind of you were going into this like maybe trying to get some ideas and try to focus what you're yeah yeah is. I just kind of wanted to like think out loud and throw you know shit it shit it aboard and see what's stuck and get your opinions on it and stuff like that um so yeah yeah you know I think I'm just gonna keep kind of like what I said is just go with that kind of uh the aesthetic of, of hanging out at the cool record store and the, the things you would see, you know, on the walls, how records were presented, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the colors that exist, you know, that were around some of the graphic design styles that you'd see. Um, so that, yeah, I have that like, you know, that, experience of going into the record store and being intimidated by the teenagers because I was a kid in the 70s and I thought they were so cool with their Blue Oyster Cult shirts. <laughs> you know? Their denim jackets and their Blue Oyster Cult shirts. And me, like, mowing yards and buying a Judas Priest album when I was in fourth grade. You know, that kind of 
that kind of feeling. Yeah. Back, back when there was, when the first thing people thought about when they heard blue oyster cult wasn't more cowbell. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and I'm talking about blue oyster cult before even like, don't fear the reaper. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the song that has the cowbell in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because now that's all I hear with that song. I, I listened to that song a million times before that bit came out. And never really noticed it. And now that's know. all you notice. It's kind of, in some ways, it ruined the song. But yeah, I, you know, I mean, that song was so overplayed anyway. But yeah. um, by classic rock radio. But the stuff that they did before that, when they were like a more hard rock band, yeah, still pretty fantastic. So, um, so, but yeah, I was yeah. just, anyway. I was just gonna, I was gonna say. I mean, again, I think I. And we talked. We talked. We touched on this in the beginning. Um, that the, the brand is kind of again. It's sort of your reputation. It's how other people perceive you. And I, I, I think you've been doing this for so long that you know. I definitely think there's there's a brand attached to you. Um, yeah, I think it's just my problem is it's it's. Um, I think it's been a long time coming to do do something new. Right. Um, you know, kind of rebrand everything. The, the or, good or, thing enhance the brand so so there's you know just just kind of stupid um insecurity that comes with it i guess yeah but i i think the good thing is because a lot of times you're trying to establish a brand and you're trying to tell people what your brand is and you're trying to influence that brand but i think it's i think what you want people to think about you i think they already think about you so in a way i think it's going to be easier for you because you just kind of need to cater what you're doing towards that and maybe add your own little spin or different things like that but i i don't think i don't think you're going to have a hard time you know sh informing people what your brand's all about because i think they already i think most people that follow you know that yeah. about you so yeah so you know, it's, and it, it's just there's also that insecurity of like, I'm an artist. I want to do something cool. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm pretty confident in what I do and stuff. So see, because with for me, it seems almost sort of the opposite. Like I think I have a really good handle on what I want. You know, what I want people to think about me, but I haven't been doing it long enough, and I'm, it seems like I'm constantly trying to explain what it is I'm doing and what all this means and things like that, which is a problem because it's not like, you know, it's not like an elevator pitch where I can say it just like that. I'm working on it, you know, um, but it's still, there's, there's kind of, it's a lot for people. Like when I'm at a show, it's a lot like, what is this? And then, um, you know, usually I get to the point, like we, you know, you know, we're like, uh, you know, a mad, we're a mad scientist supply company, mad scientist products for mad scientists and type of thing, you know, that type of thing. But I, I still, it's, it's still not, it doesn't roll off the tongue very well. So I'm still kind of working on it. I got to figure out some way just to let people know. And maybe, you know, maybe just the art lab thing, maybe that, that kind of helps. But um, so for me, even though I, you know, I kind of have an, an idea and I have all these things that I know what I want to do. It's, it's, and hopefully, Hopefully the audience will kind of understand what that is and, and will be, you know, kind of get hit to it. So, yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to, maybe it's just cause I've known you for a while. It's like, I'm like, Oh, your brand seems like it works for me, but um, yeah, I, I guess I can kind of see how someone might not understand if they're just coming fresh. Yeah. And, and that is a problem because I mean, now back to what we were saying, like, like I said, I've been following you. A lot of people that are watching this have been following you. But if you go to a show, they're not going to know who you are, probably for the most part. No. So, they, you know, that's that's the thing. It's not. It's you know, you kind of built. We kind of building this this audience, but there's a whole. There's a bunch of you know newcomers that we've got to we've got to kind of find a way to condense everything and 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 sell it you know, easily so they can just look at it and say, this is cool. Like, cause I can get people that look at this and say, Oh, this is cool, but they might not really understand what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And again, because, and that's, you know, again, that's, that's one of the things why when you go to a show, 
it's so easy to sell fan art because everyone already knows what it is. You know, right. so a lot you don't a lot of these people they don't really have to explain it. It's got already has a built-in audience. So for anyone that's trying to do something a little bit different, it's kind of an uphill climb. Um, so you know that's that's one of the one of the things we have to do. But you know, hopefully once you you know. If, assuming that you're going to start doing like live events and things like that and, and conventions oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Um, Correct. Yeah. Whatever way you present yourself, hopefully people can look at it and, and just look at it and get it and say, that's cool. I like it. I dig what you're doing. Um, yeah. And take my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I'd really like just to take everyone's money. Keep that All right, everybody, money. thanks for showing up. No, <laughs> Give me your money. Um, <laughs> so uh, what else we got here in the chat? Arlen Wright says, my wife would brand me Goofball Productions. Um, <laughs> I might be able to work with that. So, you know, I don't know that I have much to, more to say. Um, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that this helps somebody out there who is thinking about it by me thinking out loud and using you as the sounding board um, because I, I do think you're way, like way better branding than I am. Um, so, so I hope we've, uh, we've, we've done good today. I think so. I think so. Especially, you know, since we're, we're down a person. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, this may be a little shorter than normal. I mean, I think typically we go. I, I don't think hour. it is. I think, I think it's, it's probably, I think it's probably just right. Okay. Well, okay. Then I guess we can probably wrap it up and, and give everyone a refresher on who we are and where you can find us and everything. And, and also we'll give Jeff a plug since he's not here, but should be here in spirit. Yep. Um, uh, you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, once again, it's Kevin Cross. Um, right now, uh, right now, I'm just gonna have everybody go to uh, my YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Cross dot or Kevin Cross Art. Sorry, did I say that right? YouTube.com slash Kevin Cross Art. There you go. Um, and uh, there's there's links to all my you know, my portfolio and all that kind of business, um, in the description for every video. Um, and you can see how none of the branding is cohesive right now. Maybe you are coming to this show later and you'll be like, wow, what a bang up job he did. Or, <laughs> wow. He really didn't learn anything from Scott today, did he? But, um, but yeah, so, uh, there you go. YouTube, find me on YouTube. For yeah. now. And you, you can also, um, if you didn't get, what the URL and everything it's all it should all be in the descriptions of this video uh, yeah. plus a link to Jeff Jeff Lafferty's site so check out Jeff Lafferty amazing portrait artist I mean I wish you could have been here um, but we'll catch up with him next week so I am Scott Circle with CircWorks Art Labs which it doesn't say on the little uh, lower third graphic and that's an old logo so I still got a lot to do on my branding as well um, but it's some of it's still there, you know, I mean, I, I don't think, I, I think you're going to be able to tell what I am, but there's still, still a lot of fine tuning and things like that. So if you guys have any questions about what we talked about, if we left in everything out, anything out, um, leave a com comment in the comment section and we'll try to get back to you and answer whatever questions. Um, and, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to, to all three of our videos or our, our YouTube channels, please do so. Um, yeah, there's also I, a newsletter that um, yes. that Jeff runs. There's a link. I think there's a link to that in the description as well. Yep. Um, but uh, we usually do this weekly. Um, most of the time it's been on Wednesdays. This time we're doing it on Thursday. But you know it'll be usually middle of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursdays. I think are the days we're doing it. So definitely subscribe to all of our channels because if this. This show, again, it kind of rotates through our three channels. So next week, assuming Jeff's back up online, he's going to host. Um, and then we will go back to Kevin and back to me, and we keep doing that. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, I'm Scott, CircWorks Art Labs. You can find me at CircWorks anywhere on the Internet. Um, and, yeah, so thanks for joining us. And uh, I guess we'll hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, thanks Later. for hanging out in the chat, too. Yeah. Bye.
Later. <laughs> Hold on. Where's the stop button? <laughs> okay, here we go.